Hey guys, Derek here from Back to Reality. And today I just wanna really quickly tell you about some things that we're trying differently with our potatoes this season. As you know, in our garden, we always grow potatoes and everything else for that matter, using the Ruth Stout method. Meaning that we don't plant our tubers in soil, but rather under hay. If you're new here or just need a refresher, we've posted a bunch of other videos about this method in the past. So for more information about how it works and why we prefer it, as usual, I've placed some links in the description. But when we first started growing potatoes under hay, for the first few years, our results were fantastic. I mean, we certainly weren't breaking any records, but considering how quick and easy this method was, we just couldn't imagine doing it any other way. However, after those first few successful harvests, we began to encounter a couple of issues. First of all, our entire garden has been quickly taken over by rhizomatous quackgrass, because while mulch does a great job of smothering out all other weeds, it unfortunately allows quackgrass to pass right through. For more information about that problem, be sure to check out our most recent video about silage tarps. And of course, stay tuned for our upcoming video about our sawdust paths. So unfortunately, because of this, our usual growing area is going through a bit of an overhaul at the moment, which meant that, among other things, we needed to find another location to plant our potatoes this season. And the second problem is that for the past two seasons, our potato patch, which sits outside the fence, has also been invaded by voles. As it turns out, voles seem to absolutely love tunneling under mulch, likely due to its loose consistency and the fact that it's usually chock full of yummy food. In this case, large concentrated sources of delicious carbohydrates, or in other words, our spuds. So this year, we attempted to find a solution to both of these problems, and we thought that you might be interested to hear what we've come up with, because though it's still a little too early to say for sure, so far it seems to be working out really well. For starters, when considering a new location that could be ready right away while still sticking to our usual no-till methods, Paul amused that if only we could just pick up and move our hay pile, the ground underneath would likely be a perfect growing area. Because at that point, the bulk of it had been covered by what we could call the world's thickest layer of mulch for well over a year, and that certainly should have killed off all the grasses and weeds. Plus, the bottom layer of hay would have fully broken down and fed the soil more than even our regular mulching usually does. Now, of course, she was only kidding, because honestly, who wants to move a huge, heavy pile of rotting hay? But then it occurred to us that we have a small tractor and I had some time to kill. So anyway, with a section of the hay pushed off to the side, we were ready to plant. And again, we've covered this method before, so I won't go into detail. But essentially, we laid out all of our seed potatoes directly on top of the bare soil and then covered them with a thick layer of old hay. First problem solved. So next, it was time to combat the voles. Now, one of our suspicions about our initial success was that we had previously, by sheer coincidence, planted a row of onions along the backside of our potato patch where it would be most likely to encounter wandering critters. And we've since read that the pungent scent and flavor of alliums, like garlic, leeks, chives, and onions, is distasteful to voles and other rodents. But again, I wanna emphasize that for us, this was simply due to it being a convenient location rather than some sort of planned deterrent. However, in hindsight, during the seasons where we did include the onions, we didn't encounter any vole activity. Whereas during the seasons where we didn't include the onions, we did have vole activity. So this year, we decided to double down on that correlation and planted a single row of onions all the way around the perimeter of our entire potato patch with only a single two foot wide gap for a walking path. We weren't super precise on our spacing, but figured that about six inches would give enough room for the onions to grow while still creating a dense enough barrier for our furry foes. But that was back at the end of May. So now, a couple months later, let's go see how it's been working out. First of all, as you can see, the potato plants have been growing up through the hay like usual. The foliage is green and healthy, and most of them have been flowering for the past couple of weeks. In fact, some of the plants have even produced their poisonous potato fruit. For more information about those, be sure to check out this video that we posted a few years ago. Oh, and around the perimeter, the onions are also growing like normal. So far, so good. And the next thing to point out is that though we can still find the odd weed popping up here and there, for the most part, the combination of mulch and dense foliage has done a pretty good job of preventing any plant-based competition. But interestingly, as you can see, the same is not true directly outside the potato patch on the other side of our onion barrier. 
I guess the strip of nutrient-rich soil that we left partially exposed between our mulch and the hay pile must have made for an ideal target for any weed seeds that got stirred up in the process. But now let's take a look under the mulch to see if we can find any tubers, and more importantly, any signs of critters. Another great thing about this method is just how easy it is to harvest new potatoes while the plants are still growing. No need for shovels, just reach into the mulch and feel around a bit. Plus, as long as we only pull out a few here and there, the rest of the plants seem to continue growing just fine, despite the disruption. And so far, as we would expect at this point in the season, I'm finding a mix of small to medium-sized spuds, and they all look great. No nibbles or scratches at all, other than a few spots where it looks like my gloves must have rubbed away some of the delicate skin. So again, it's still too early to say for sure, but after a spot check of about five different locations, it's looking like we may finally be rodent-free again this season. Now, can we say with certainty that this was due to the onions? Unfortunately not. Because in order to make that claim, we'd at least have to compare it to a second bed in a similar location during the same growing season. But minus the onions. Because vole populations can fluctuate from year to year, and their activities can even be influenced by the weather. Plus, another explanation could be that during the first couple of seasons, we were just lucky enough to stay under the vole radar. But then, during the two most recent seasons, maybe they just finally happened to stumble upon us. And then, now this year, though the new location was nearly the same, perhaps they just haven't yet found us again. So in that case, the inclusion or exclusion of onions could be entirely coincidental. So at most, I'd say that this evidence for the onion barrier is simply anecdotal for the time being. But when combined with our previous results, and considering there's no obvious downside, I figure if we're going to be planting onions anyway, then why not use them as a possible extra line of defense for our potatoes? Plus, onion sets are generally pretty cheap, and they're super easy to plant, so even if we do have another onion crop somewhere else, I still think it's worth it. Oh, and back to the new location, because one of the great things about starting a new Ruth Stout potato bed within a hay pile is that hilling with more mulch during the growing season has never been more convenient. Just grab an armful from either side and spread it directly onto the plants. In fact, even though this location started out as just a quick workaround for this year, I think we might actually consider it for our new default moving forward. Push our mulch pile aside in the spring to plant a new bed, then the following spring push it back and plant again. That way, every season we start with a fresh soil surface that's had an entire year to replenish, simply due to the fact that we're always accumulating a reserve of mulch anyway. And then, as a side benefit, why carry the mulch across the garden when instead we could just lift it and drop it right where we stand? Anyway, all in all, this seems to be going pretty well so far, and we'll be sure to update you as we continue these experiments in the future. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Hey guys, uh, still here. So this video was originally recorded at the end of July, but as usual, it took me a few weeks to finally finish putting it all together. But on the bright side, that means that I can now give you a super quick update, because since then we've continued to harvest a good handful of potatoes every couple of days. And so far, we've still not encountered a single sign of mice or voles. No tunnels, nibbles, or scratches. So again, I think this remains purely anecdotal for now, and the plants still have a while to go before the final harvest. But so far, it still looks like we're rodent-free this year. Anyway, we'll keep you posted, and we'd love to hear what you guys think. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.